Hello, I'm Richard Murphy. I've made two videos now, one explaining what money is, which is a promise to pay, and another explaining how banks create money in cooperation with you if you ask for a loan. Now, what people then say to me is if banks don't lend out other people's money, and I promise you, as a matter of fact, they don't, then why do they need bank deposits? Why are they happy for us to put our money in their bank? Well, actually, to some degree, of course, they're not. Have you noticed the rates of interest they pay on the money that you deposit with them? In truth, you're normally losing money when you deposit in the bank, even if you get paid interest. So they're not that wildly excited about holding your money. But there is another reason why they want your money. And that is because of the nature of modern banking. Although banks create money when they make loans, they actually have a mismatch between your promise to pay and the promise they make to you, which is to pay someone else. 85% of all the loans that banks now create are effectively property-backed mortgages, just like the one you may have on your home or which businesses take out to buy business premises. Now, if you know anything about a mortgage, you know that they last a long time. The last one I took out lasted for 25 years. That's a very long commitment and, of course, a very long time in which something can go wrong with your promise to pay. In the meantime, they have settled the bill for you to someone else, the person you bought the house from, right now. The money's literally gone. They've done their side of the equation straight away. Your side of the equation takes a long time to fulfill. And when 85% of their loans are to people who are going to take a long time to make payment, what we've got are banks lending long and effectively borrowing short. Borrowing short from you as a bank depositor if you have money in the bank, and some people do. So what they need is that money in the bank to cover this mismatch. It effectively provides them with their capital. The money that means that if somebody comes to ask for a lot of their deposit back, well, actually, they've got the means to settle it. They can always pay another bank on behalf of that person. Or literally, they can lay their hands on cash from the Bank of England if that is the way the person wants to withdraw their deposit. So they need money, not because they're going to lend it, but to provide them with something else. And that's called liquidity. So it means that there's always money available on demand. But it doesn't mean they lend it. It just means they can pay it out. One other important point about this, and that is that they also need money in case they suffer bad debts. You create money with the bank when you promise to pay. As I say, the bank almost always fulfills its part of the bargain quite quickly. They're good like that. That's why, of course, you don't take a credit reference on them, but they do take a credit reference on you. Now, suppose for any reason you can't pay. You lose your job, you become ill, you get divorced and your circumstances changed. Who knows? It could be you die, of course. And in some cases, there's no life assurance to cover the risk in that situation. Or a business goes bust. Now, in those situations, of course, your promise is not fulfilled. The bank's paid for you, you haven't paid, there's a mismatch. The bank is short of money. Now, that's why it has to make money on lending. It's why it makes a margin, a difference between the price it charges you and the price it pays the depositors. That margin is where they make money. They make that money to cover that risk that you won't pay. That's why if there is no security on your loan, it's on a credit card or a personal loan without any form of security, like a mortgage. Um, I mean, literally, it hasn't got a mortgage on it then the price for the money is very high because the chance you'll default is well pretty big, I'm afraid to say. That's their experience, so they charge you for it. You pay for the collective risk that payment will not take place to them. That's why they need money. They might suffer a whole batch of these failed loans at one time. And if they do, they need cash in the bank to cover that risk as well. So they take deposits to add to the sums that their shareholders provide that provide the capital that makes sure that the bank stays liquid in the event of a crisis of any sort. We did have a banking crisis in 2008. 
the government did, of course, bail it out. The government continued to support the banks by literally guaranteeing the deposits of UK depositors in those banks up to £85,000. So the chance of a banking crisis is very low. But just in case it happens, banks need cash. And that's why they're still willing to pay you a bit for you to hold your money with them rather than to stuff it under the mattress. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in what I've been saying in this video, please subscribe. There is a button below the viewing screen. If you're interested in what I have to say on Twitter, I'm at Richard J. Murphy on that medium. If you want to look at my blog, that's taxresearch.org.uk. And we have a Facebook page as well, Richard J. Murphy. So one of those things will get you more information on what this video series is about. And I hope I'll see you again soon.